Welcome to an introduction to managerial accounting brought to you by Parkbench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. For more information about Parkbench Tutors, please visit parkbenchtutors.com. In this podcast, we are going to focus on budget planning and control, and we shall work through the stages in constructing a budget. Why do we need to plan a budget? A budget is a record made prior to a period in which planned income and expenditure are set out. The budget, therefore, sets goals for the business and the objectives for the coming periods. It provides guidance and communication for managers, who then know what their targets are to be, and it also coordinates the activities within a company. Setting out a series of figures is only a part of the process. There has to be control, which means looking at actual results and comparing them to planned results. This allows evaluation of the performance of the company as a whole and also of the performance of managers in different departments. Comparing performance can help improve the efficiency of operations. Where there are marked deviations, it is important to determine whether this is a result of a poorly planned budget the quality of the management, or a change in circumstances. Budget planning commences with determination of figures for production, marketing and administration. Once the budget is set for the period, it will be implemented. The results will be compared with the set budget and the process of evaluation will then take place. As a result of evaluation, there will be a review of manager performance and department performance. Good management will be rewarded and poor management may result in loss of bonuses or even termination of employment. There may be a need to make changes and revisions as a result of evaluation. If performance was affected by a factor such as a large rise in energy costs, then these changes will need to be incorporated into future periods. Budgets are usually prepared by a committee, comprising the senior managers working with the chief financial manager. The approach may be top-down, where there is little input from low-level managers, or it may be bottom-up, where the lower-level managers become the main source of information. Generally speaking, a heavy top-down approach is considered less efficient because of lack of information. Nearly all companies will have a detailed budget for a 12-month period, and some for 24 months. Because companies need to borrow money from banks, they can be asked to produce a 5-year budget, though many managers believe these have little meaning because of levels of uncertainty. A budget can be prepared by looking at all revenue and expenditure and justifying it. Such an approach is called a zero-based budget. It is also time-consuming and expensive to construct. Most companies will typically make use of information from previous periods. The development of a master budget will always start with preparation of the sales budget. Once the sales budget is prepared, then the focus will shift to the production budget. The production budget is made up of three separate budgets, a budget for direct materials, a budget for direct labour, and a budget for manufacturing overhead. Other costs are then determined, which include the sales and administrative budget and, where applicable, a capital acquisitions budget. With all the information now at hand, the company can prepare a number of budget statements. These include the budgeted income statement, the cash budget and the budgeted balance sheet. The overall map for the preparation of the master budget is shown here. We will now work through an example to show these stages in more detail. Tropical Tents produces a special tent for use in warm and humid climates. The company starts by preparing the sales budget. The figures for sales for the previous year are entered onto a spreadsheet. The sales manager has forecast a 10% increase in sales for the coming year, and these figures are then calculated for each quarter. The unit selling price is entered onto the spreadsheet. 
The budget revenue is then obtained by multiplying the projected sales by the unit selling price. We now have a sales budget. The production budget is then determined. For this calculation the company must know the ending inventory for each period, including the last period of the previous year, and what the desired starting inventory is for each period. The production budget will start with the figures for unit sales and the sales budget. The requested inventory is set as 10% of the next quarter's sales. So quarter 2 has projected sales of 4,620 tenths. Therefore the requested inventory for quarter 1 is 10% of this, 462 units. The total number of tenths needed each quarter is now calculated. There will be tenths in inventory at the start of each period and this total needs subtracting to get the number of tenths that the company needs to produce. The inventory at the start of quarter 1 is that carried forward from the previous year. Otherwise, the figure is obtained by looking at the required inventory from the end of the previous period. We now have the number of tenths that have to be produced during each quarter. Now that we have figures for the number of tenths to be produced each quarter, we can determine the direct materials that are required for each quarter. We start by entering the number of tenths to be produced onto the spreadsheet. Then enter the cost of the parts and materials for each tent. Multiply the number of units by the cost per unit and we have the production cost. However, just as we had an inventory of completed tents, the production department will always want to maintain inventory of parts. As before, this figure has been set as 10% of the production for the following quarter. As before, the figure for the first quarter is that from the previous period. Again, we then subtract the inventory at the start of each quarter so that we now have a figure for the cost of purchasing direct materials for each quarter. The direct labour budget can also be determined since we know the number of tents to be produced each quarter. Each tent requires four hours of labour to complete and labour costs are $16 per hour. The direct labour cost per tent is therefore $64. We enter the number of tents that have to be produced from the production budget. This will then give us our direct labour costs. The company is now in a position to see what effect this will have on the labour force. The total number of hours to be worked in each quarter is calculated. Each employee has a 35 hour week and there are 13 weeks in a quarter. So the average hour for each employee will be 455. This shows a labour requirement varying from 37 to 47 employees each quarter. The company will have to determine whether the best solution is to hire more labour or to make use of overtime. The last budget for the production of the tents is the manufacturing overhead budget. Once again we start with the number of tents that need to be produced for each quarter. We enter the unit variable costs, indirect materials and indirect labour and determine the total variable overhead for each quarter. There may be other variable costs but we have tried to keep this as simple as we can. The fixed costs of salaries and depreciation are entered to give total fixed costs. Again we have kept this simple, there can be other fixed costs. The total overhead is determined. However, for the purpose of determining cash payments, we now need to subtract out the depreciation. This gives us the figures for cash payments for overhead each quarter. Finally, the budget for sales and administrative expenses. In this case, the cost of salaries, advertising and other expenses are entered, together with depreciation, giving a total for the budget. 
Depreciation is then subtracted back to give the cash payments for these expenses each quarter. We have assumed there is no capital expenditure budget this period to keep things simple. We now look at determining the unit costs to produce each tent. We have figures for direct materials and direct labour. Dividing total manufacturing overhead by total units produced we get a unit cost for manufacturing overhead. Totaling these we have a unit cost per ten produced. The budget income statement can now be constructed. We start by entering the revenue from sales. The cost of goods sold is now determined by multiplying the unit cost per tent by the sales for each quarter. Subtracting cost of goods sold from sales revenue gives the figures for gross margin for each quarter. Selling and other expenses are subtracted from the gross margin. This gives us the net income for each quarter and the total net income for the year. We will look at constructing other statements in the next podcast. This ends the first podcast on constructing a budget. Brought to you by Parkbench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. Thank you for watching and for listening. We wish you success in your studies. For more information about Parkbench Tutors, please visit parkbenchtutors.com.